change. The contagion effect of the Greek debt crisis has and will continue to impact global markets, including South Africa. Annabelle Bishop, Group Economist at Investec, joins us now for more. So good to have you with us, Annabelle. Uh, yeah. Hopefully you can provide a lot more perspective because uh, some people say that while well, Greece is so tiny and insignificant, uh, it won't really have a significant knock-on effect on South Africa. Let's start with the three potential scenarios that you've highlighted in your release and uh, uh, delve into them individually that Greece might even negotiate uh, uh, very proactively and we might see a quick resolution to this matter? Yes, so, so that I've given quite a low probability of about 20%, but I think you know it's in its best interests to clearly try and make as much movement as it possibly can to reaching a bailout because on the 20th of July it, ne it needs to pay money to the ECB. If it doesn't do that, technically the ECB can actually remove support. And of course this ELA facility that's being offered to Greeks banks by the ECB, currently about 89 billion euros, would obviously then potentially need to be withdrawn. And that places Greece in a very difficult situation. They may actually have to start issuing internal liquidity instruments, the um, Cyprus administration, which in turn would be very much like an IOU and that would be the first move in actually moving away from the euro. So that's a, a bad scenario for them. Grexit, which is our scenario three, is not a good scenario. Mm. Six was uh, briefly touched 12.50 against the US dollar, of course, and that's to do with US dollar strength against the euro. But that's the barometer of uh, the risk of trade, I think, when it comes to uh, South Africa. This is the one we have to look at. If people are saying to themselves, well, this has been a muted reaction to the Greek situation, uh, then it's starting to become less muted now, isn't it? And uh, gosh, it looks vulnerable to me. Yes, I think, you know, that's really where our big risk is coming through for South Africa. It's translating through into the currency, really because our RAD is very much a proxy for emerging markets and turn a proxy for risk aversion, so that's obviously rising quite significantly. Also, South Africa is very open to global financial markets, and obviously negative risk aversion, uh, risk aversion itself has obviously affected them negatively. So we're seeing the currency weaken. I think the risk for us, if this gets worse, is that we could start to see some sell-off emerging market bonds as well, and that certainly would impact South Africa. Wouldn't the U.S. as well also play quite a significant influence in that regard? Certainly, you know, we've got quite a number of factors here. We've got what's going on in China. We've got the United States looking to lift off its interest rates. And, of course, obviously what's happening in Greece as well. So all of that's really impacting us in terms of our currency because we are such a very open market to these global financial market moves. Annabelle, do you think it's naive of people to say that Greece is a, a nation of 10 and a half, 11 million people, 62 and a half percent of which uh, voted against austerity measures? Why should we worry about it? What I don't think people understand is uh, the interconnectivity between uh, Greece and the other Eurozone countries and uh, people elsewhere. I mean, the, the debt that they have is 330 billion. I don't think what anyone's really explained is where that 330 billion is held and who is uh, impacted uh, should it not be paid back, which of course it won't be. Yes, uh, Germany is a big holder, as is Italy, Spain and France, also the ECB, the um, IMF. Of course, the worry certainly is because of the the fact that Greece is part of the Eurozone, if it were to leave, if it wanted to uh, obviously go through Grexit, then from that consequence there's, there's really no rules governing how it's going to exit. And of course, you know, having such a very large quantum of debt, as you said, would certainly become very much larger if they were to issue their own currency, which they'd clearly be required to do on exit. And that could see almost up to a 60% you know, immediate devaluation. So that would, as I said, really push up this debt quantum, making it utterly impossible for them to repay it. And the worry certainly is that you know, the Eurozone cannot offer for them debt forgiveness because if it does then the other countries on the periphery such as Italy, Spain, Ireland, Portugal would then clearly also perhaps wish to follow that route that would ra raise moral hazard and the real concern certainly there is if those uh, perif other periphery countries didn't want to go through austerity programs repay their debt becomes a much bigger issue, issue and of course it threatens the actual unity of the Eurozone. For the South African economy are there potential lessons that we can learn from this crisis? I think that's a very good question. You know, certainly for the South African economy, some of the problems that happened in Greece were that they really um, increased current expenditure of government enormously by paying um, a lot of money for increased size of the civil service, obviously social security, social welfare payments as well. Mm -hmm. That was unsustainable on the back of their true borrowing ability, uh, sustainable borrowing, and also on the back of their revenue collection they were getting from their population. So, you know, from that point of view, South Africa is certainly, and I, I do want to emphasize this, not 
you know, likely to see, uh, not, not likely to go through what Greece is going through in the, in the immediate future. But obviously, the lesson for any country is that if you overextend yourself financially mm -hmm. and if you get to the point where possibly you could become bankrupt or insolvent, and certainly if you don't have anyone to provide rescue for you, which is what's happening or what has happened for quite a while with Greece, and hopefully they will reach some resolution now and they, they will stay in the Eurozone. But, you know, without a big brother to help you pay for your debts, like Germany or the Eurogroup, then, you know, South Africa would be an extremely difficult situation. So I think the lesson is we need to keep a close watch on our expenditure and also on tripling the size of the private sector corporate sector in South Africa so we can engender much faster revenue growth in terms of government taxation and of course that's something that you know was the problem in Greece insufficient money is coming in from tax. Sounds like it's all linked uh, getting employment up private sector participation uh, increase uh, tax revenues long story but it all makes sense in the end. Annabelle thank you so much for your time today that was Annabelle Bishop group economist at Investec.